In the second example of rags, let us see how we can introduce metadata into our chunks. So first let's talk about why we even need metadata. Let's say we put 100 different private docs or books into our vector store and we ask a question. In addition to getting the chunks, it will be better if we also know where the chunks originated from, right? For example, like it's this particular book, chapter 4, paragraph 3, or this particular document, this section, paragraph 7. So it gives us extra information on where the chunks came from. So if you think about it, it is very similar to what ChatGPT search does as well. When we ask a question, it crawls the web, gives you a response, but at the same time, it attaches a source URL as well. Like these are the websites I took the answers from. So this way, we know that the answers are legitimate and it is not just hallucination. Another example could be, we could store transcripts from a meeting in the vector store and two years from now, we can chat with a model, ask it what was discussed that particular day and it will give me the answer along with the source as well. So we can just click on that particular link and go further explore manually. So sky is the limit. So to help with this particular example, I've added a lot more books and prepared code for this section as well as the next few sections for rags. So let's jump into the code now and you will find that it's not really that different to what we've written earlier in the previous section. First thing, we need to pull all of our new books into the vector store so that we can start asking questions, right? So I've added a few more books right here, like Frankenstein, Dracula, etc, etc. And these are pretty long books. Now let us chunk all of these books, embed them and then put them in the vector store. So first thing, we are getting a reference to the documents directly. And then we are also telling Langchain to create our vector database containing all of these books in this new file called chroma.db with metadata inside of the db folder. So we are using a different database file this time. I've already run this file, so I already have the full embedded version of all of my books in this database file. And the rest of the code is very identical to the first example we saw. We're checking if the database is already created or not. If it's already created, we do not go inside of this if block. So coming in, this is where it's slightly different. Basically what we did the last time, but this time we're embedding several books. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go inside of the documents folder and search for all the files that have a txt extension. As you can see, I've, I've got all the books with the txt extension. And this line is going to grab all of those book file names and put it in this array. All right now, we're looping through all the book file names and with each book file name, I'm going to load it in memory using the loader and I'm going to add it to the final documents array. Very, very similar to what we did earlier, but instead of just one book or document, we are doing several right here. But there is one more additional thing that we are doing. Along with the document, we are also going to be adding a metadata to each document. Okay, so we can have as much information that we want, but for now I'm just saying source and I'm adding a book file to the source. So if I'm loading the Frankenstein book, the book file name is going to be Frankenstein. And from here on, we are going to go through the same process. We're chunking the entire list of books and then we're specifying the embedding model that we're going to be using to embed, which is going to be the next step. And finally, we are creating the vector store by providing the docs, the embedding model, plus the final DB file it should create and put all of the embedded data in. And as I already told you at the start, I've already ran this file so I already got the DB file created with all the chunks embedded. So let's now go to the next section where we can actually ask questions to the rag system. So what we're going to do here is pretty much the same. We point the file to the new DB location that we've just created a minute ago. So this was the DB name, if you remember. So this line loads the DB file up. So we provide the location as well as the embedding model. So here is the query that we are going to be asking. So it is going to be, where is Dracula's castle located? If you're familiar with Dracula, he's a vampire that lives in a castle. And this is the question that we're asking. And obviously, somewhere in the book, the location of the castle will be mentioned. So our super intelligent rag system is going to retrieve the relevant chunks when I run this file. So let's look at the next piece of code. And here, we're configuring the retriever. 
we're still going to be using this type of searching, the similarity score threshold. And we're also going to be specifying the count should be three and the threshold value should be 0.3. This is the number that works for me because if I reduce this, it doesn't give me any results. So in your applications, you will have to find the right balance. And finally, we are going to be using the magic keyword invoke. And if you remember, it does two things, right? It converts the user question into an embedding. And now, and now that we have a query that is in an embedding vectorized format, the book content, which is also in a vectorized embedding format, it goes out, queries the top three chunks. And finally, it prints out all of the chunks. So I'm pretty excited to run this file. Let us see if we're able to find the answer in the retrieved chunks. But let's run this file. So it's going to take anywhere from four to 10 seconds. And amazing. We now have three chunks and these are pretty big chunks. We know that Dracula exists in this town called uh, Transylvania. If you've watched any of the animated movies, etc., etc. So let us actually see if the term Transylvania is present in any of these retrieved chunks. So as you can see, we have Transylvania mentioned in the third line and also in the seventh line. I had visited the British Museum and made search among the books and maps in the library regarding Transylvania. And also down here, it is giving the exact locality of the castle Dracula. So with just this one paragraph, even a human can deduce that Dracula lives in Transylvania. And more, even more importantly, we can also see the source of the chunk, which says Dracula.txt. Because if you remember, we added the book names as metadata to each of the chunks. So let's now move on to the next chunk and let's search for the term Transylvania. And you can see that it is not listed in the second and third chunks, but it probably gives more information that the Dracula does live in Transylvania. So you can see that it says, thus, when we find the habitation of this man that was, meaning the Dracula, so it is still talking about the location of the Dracula. So we only have three books right now, but imagine 100 books, 1000 books or private company documents, right? And how rags basically allow the possibility of chatting with it in natural language and be able to get that answer, right? So I hope that you're starting to see the power of rag systems. So that is basically how we can add metadata for each of our chunks, all right? So the next step is basically to send all these retrieved chunks along with the user's question to the LLM so that the LLM can actually look at the uh, chunks that might potentially have the answer to that particular question. And it is going to give us the answer, which is going to be in this case, Transylvania. So we will see how we can do that in the next section.